surrounded by wrestling fans. Not, not sports entertainment fans. Professional wrestling fans. Professional wrestling. This is it. This is us standing up. This is the Wrestling Man's Podcast. A podcast that stands up for professional wrestling. Why? Because wrestling matters. So join the revolution. Because the revolution is now. Well, enough is enough. And it's time for a change. Professional wrestling. This is it. This is us standing up. Yes. 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 That's 1314. Tell death. Dina, I am the best in the world. Cause that's the bottom line. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another installment of the Progress Wrestling Podcast presented by Wrestling Matters. And yeah, guys, a little bit later than planned. Like I said on the ICW podcast, I have been... I've had a hectic week, a very hectic schedule. I've got a busy month with Middlesbrough at the moment, the uh, student job that I do. So you might not get, for the next two weeks, for this week and next week, you might not get the Progress Wrestling and ICW on time. But, God damn it, I'll give you it nonetheless. If I don't give you it on the day, I'll give you it sometime in the week, no doubt. Now, Progress Wrestling culminated with Chapter 12 this time, guys. So... Without further ado, I'm going to review it. And it kicked off with Paul Robinson versus Tommy End. Now, Tommy had the the, uh, power and kick advantage, even though Paul was a kicker himself. He's a kickboxer himself. But the quickness was definitely with Paul. But, I mean, Tommy End just proved a little bit too strong for the guy. I mean, it was just massive kick after massive kicks. And let's just say this right now. Tommy End can throw kicks. Not saying that Paul couldn't, but Tommy End, if he nails you with one of them kicks, your head's about to be taken off. And he was throwing kicks. Um, A good way to start off the show, I thought. A good little match. Like I say, it wasn't on for that much. About, say, maybe five, ten minutes at the most. Uh, But... Yeah, Tommy End, uh, at this point in in, chap- in uh, Progress Wrestling, making a vow for the uh, singles ranks and everything, and Paul Robinson at this point as well. Not only was he making a singles run, he also has a tag team partner with Will Ospreay. Like I say, quick, it was just some good stuff along the way. Uh, pace always quickened with Paul Robinson in charge. And like I say, Tommy End was the dominator with the kicks and kick, brain buster combo, near fall, and uh, he hits the double stomp to get the victory. So basically he kicks him in the face, and boy did he hit jackpot. Brain buster, near fall, double stomp, Tommy gets the win. And uh, it was all uh, all down from there, basically. Tommy with a win to start off Chapter 12. The next match wasn't even a match, hardly, to be honest. But uh, it was Grado against Madman Manson. And it was a bomb bag, which was held by Grado, versus a, j- uh, a jar of balls, which was held by Manson. It was a unification, the winner gets... When it takes all. Uh, Manson uses the ref. I mean, this was just, again, as it always is, both of them can wrestle, but this was mainly about the entertainment. I mean, it was one point, one of my favourite moments in the match was, uh, I think Grado was looking to do a move. Uh, Manson was up on the top row, back to Grado, and then Grado tried to get up. I think he was looking to do like a German suplex or something off the top rope, and then the Titanic music hit in the background, and... All you heard was a Titanic song in the background, which was hilarious. And then the referee tries to be a douchebag, breaks the mop, and then as he comes back, the German suplex appears to uh, take place and takes out the referee. So the referee trying to be all macho ref, backfired on him, which was hilarious. But uh, Grado, Grado eventually ended up winning this match with Rock Bottom, Stunner, and Pedigree combinations. And yes, you heard me correctly, ladies and gentlemen. He used the Rock Bottom, then the Stunner, and then the Pedigree, and got the victory and walked away with both of the bum bag and the balls but all in all it was a good it was an okay match but it was more about the entertainment i mean grado's not saying that he can't wrestle because he can and manson's all about the entertainment anyway but grado you know great if i had to pick a wrestler out of these two i think it'd be definitely grado but uh, this was all about entertainment value 
uh, which was okay with me because there was some there was some funny stuff in there as well. But uh, Grado eventually ended up getting the victory with the pedigree uh, rock bottom stunner and pedigree combo. Never thought I'd say that in a sentence. <laughs> that involved Grado at least. Uh, back to wrestling. Will Ospreay and Zach Gibson one on one in the. Uh, natural progression tournament uh, Zach the wrestler will the high flyer although he can wrestle and it was just a good old fashioned even match with great wrestling in it and I mean these two could put on, these two literally put on the clinic for the time they had uh, the story of the match was Zach working on the arm of uh, Will Ospreay you know pick point in the arm uh, like I said Will was the uh, Will was the high flyer Zach was more established as a wrestler and Zach had the technical side of it of the uh, of the two to be honest with you as he was working on the arm and everything stretching the arm some great combos in this as well man great DDT into a sink shot falcon arrow by Will Ospreay I mean there was a great long blower twisting brain buster by uh, Zach as well some great combos in this man from great from two phenomenal wrestlers and Zach, Zach Gibson being the first ever Davy Boy Smith tournament winner. The British Bulldog tournament uh, that they had, the round robin tournament that they had. Zach Gibson won it. And uh, yeah, during the match as well, Will actually hit a zigzag, which is a reverse neck breaker, but we all know it's a zigzag if you're a Dolph Ziggler fan. Uh, and then Will eventually, thanks to a miscue by Paul Robinson, Will eventually tapped out to uh, an armbar from Zach. And Will was angry with Paul after the match a little bit, but then they shook hands and hugged out and, and all that. But all that le- leads to what happens next chapter. I believe it's next chapter, but I'll talk about that next week or next time around, at least. And then it was the Bangor Knights against the London Riots in a street fight. And guys, this wasn't a tag team match. This was just two teams that couldn't stand one another going at it in a fight. It was an absolute fight. Weapons were involved, cricket bats, hood caps. It was just basically a straight up fight. There was really nothing more you could say. It was a good old fashioned what a street fight should be. The riots win it with their finisher eventually, but it was just a good old fashioned street fight. The fight was in the crowd, you know. It was just a straight up street fight, which is how a street fight should be. Just straight up. You've got weapons there, no tags involved, no tag team or one on one, whatever. Just basically just go at it. No rules, no nothing. Just turn them loose. And two great teams just went at it. Two great teams who couldn't stand one another at this time. Uh, Bangra Knights basically looking for revenge on, on the riots. And Riots just looking to take over Progress Wrestling along with Jimmy Havoc. Uh, more on him later. But, yeah, just a good old-fashioned street fight. And if I'm being honest, this quite possibly stole the show. Because it was. It was just a straight-up fight. And I enjoy it. And, hey, show me a good fight any day and I'll watch it. No matter whether it's in wrestling or in other places. But, hey, great tag team fight. But I can guarantee you it's far from over. It was far from over. Uh, big time. Uh, uh, FSU versus Project Ego versus Screw Indie Wrestling to crown the first Progress Wrestling Tag Team Champions. And hard hitting, fast paced, t- triple threat tag team title match this was, which was absolutely superb. And um, again, this is another one that could have stole the show. It was very difficult to pick a, an outright match that stole the show in my mind. And uh, but this was a candidate. The Bank of a Night Street fight was a candidate. But, I mean, these two just basically went at it, man. And it was done right as well. All three teams really went at it for, for, for all the match. They put everything on the line, all to get the tag team titles. Uh, Eddie does a plunger and Mark did a suit and star press on the outside. They just put their bodies on the line in this match to go for the tag team championship. And, and the thing I liked about it was it was a triple threat tag team match. Not like these other people with other companies do that means one man from each team starts and then they, they're tagged in and everything because it's a triple threat match and it's how it should be there hasn't been there's not there hasn't been that done lately at least in my mind in wwe at least um if i can talk to, to, about wwe i don't think any, i don't think that's happened since 1998 i don't think they've done that since 1998 quite frankly but uh great all-around tag team match all the teams went at it, and then it culminated with a double stomp, next stop driver, f- and FCU, FSU rather, become the tag team champions of Progress Wrestling. So, Mark Andrews and Big Eddie Dennis 
become the tag team champions, which was just phenomenal. Great tag team match. Uh, I loved it. Like I said, it's an arguable point to who steals the show in this, um, but this match, the triple threat match, as well as the street fight, could have basically saw the show. Many of you may have your opinions on it, uh, but I'll just leave it at that, really. Next match was Day. De- uh, Doug Williams and Dave Mastiff. Now, these two put on the clinic. Two great wrestlers just basically going at it. Kind of spoilt, to be honest with you, because Nathan Cruz and Catherine Rose came out to watch. Catherine Rose ended up getting involved, and both men decided to take turns arguing on who would take out Catherine Rose. And then eventually, uh, headbutt to a headbutt by Doug Williams, then a knee, and then Dave Mastiff just power bombs the Jesus out of her, and, and then next minute Nathan Cruz is carrying her backstage. And then from that moment on, it was just a good old wrestling match between the two because both the both these men could wrestle. Yes, Ma- Mastiff's three hundred pounds, but he can hang with the best of them. And I've had my I've had my uh, opinions about Doug Williams because I met him at an EPW show, and I'll just leave it at that. I won't go into too much detail. Um, I've had my opinions on him as a person, but there's one thing I've never denied that he is a talented, phenomenal wrestler. I'll never take that away from him, but other things he could improve on, in my opinion. And that was just my opinion from what I got on the show. I don't know what he's like personally. I'm not friends with the guy. I don't know what he's like personally. But when I was on, when he came to the EPW show in April, I believe it was April of 2014 or 2013. It was one of them. Uh, my first time back in EPW, or first time back working with them when this whole thing started with the with the um, the wrestling, if you will. It used to be the EPW at least. Um the whole thing started, and I was disappointed with him, to be honest. I was disappointed of his of his uh, personality and his attitude, basically. But as a wrestler, he's one of the best in the world. I'll never deny that. Um, attitude-wise, I got the feeling that he didn't want to be there, despite the fact that he was he, he, he wrestled that night and he had a good match. But I, I got the from from the body language and everything, I got the feeling he didn't want to be there, and his attitude and that stunk towards the fans. You know. I'll, you know, I've, I've, I have an opinion about it, but I won't say it on this show. But other than that, he's a great wrestler, phenomenal wrestler, and him and Mastiff had a had a um, great match. And Dave Mastiff ended up winning with the Cannonball and got the victory one two three and a big win over Doug Williams as well. And that left with the main event, which saw Rampage Brown, Eligero, Party Marty Skrull, even though he had villain on his tights. <laughs> He was still partying, even though he had the villain on his tights. I want to see the heel turn myself. And, uh, yeah, Jimmy Havoc as well. All four men in there for the Progress Wrestling Championship. Uh, James Smallman threatened to strip Jimmy of the title if he didn't send the uh, London Rides backstage because the London Rides came out with him. They wanted to keep it fair. And Jimmy grants his wish. Jimmy's wi- And Jim grants Jimmy's wish of a no disqualification fatal four-way match. And it wish was granted. And as Jimmy turned round, Marty absolutely cleaned his clock with a chair shot straight to his face. Straight up. One fell swoop. Boom. Took it right in the face. And this was a fight, guys. This wasn't a wrestling match like a normal fatal four way. This is what you get with, this is what you get when you put the DQ uh, rule on it. They fought in the crowd near the bar as well. And uh, one of my favourite points in the match was uh El Deguero hitting a somersault plunger from the sound booth on Marty and Rampage Brown. They never saw that coming, quite frankly, neither did I. Uh, another very innovative part of a favourite part of the show, a very innovative um part was Marty had uh Jimmy Havoc up in a DVD. Leguero was hanging in the tree of war and Marty takes Jimmy and just DVDs him right into Leguero. It was very innovative. Never seen that before. Uh, Jimmy and uh, and these are just my favourite parts in the match. Jimmy double stomps Marty Marty through three chairs. Rampage Brown power bombs the Jesus out of Jimmy. Hard four power bombs, kinda like the combos Chris Jericho did just Hell bombed him straight. It's a wonder he didn't break the ring with him. And everybody, everybody took turns and throwing chairs to Brown. And, Jim, and and Brown was just picking these chairs up left, right and centre and just throwing them at Jimmy, which was hilarious. Um, I mean, great fatal four-win match all in all. All four men put everything on the line to be the Progress Wrestling Champion. It was a five-star match, in my opinion, just like the other two as well. It was a five-star match. And it all ended, the story of the match came at the end, because it all ended with Brown. Um, he power drives Marty. 
He does his pike pile driver, looks to get the cover on him. Uh, Jimmy whacks him with a chair and then covers Marty and gets the victory. Basically runs away with it. Um, and Jimmy Havoc ended up retaining the Progress Wrestling Championship. But uh, Rampage Brown was pissed. And as Jimmy celebrated, he turned around and Rampage whacked him in the face. And then delivered two spike pile drivers, which was his finishing move, to him and left Jimmy laying. And then Smallman comes in and says, there's always a plan B. Mark Andrews comes out and they announce that at Chapter 13, which I'll review next week, it will be a ladder match between him and Jimmy Havoc for the Progress Wrestling title. So, all in all, good show. The first time in the ballroom, making their debut in the ballroom, and yeah, it was a good show. And I'm looking forward to seeing Chapter uh, 13 as well. So with that being said, guys, hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Progress Wrestling Podcast, presented by Wrestling Matters. Sorry it's so late, guys, but it is what it is. I've been busy all week, and looks like I'll be doing the same again next week. So, uh It doesn't matter at the end of the day. I will get these up for you on that week. No problemo. And until next time, guys, my name is Anthony Walker. Enjoy the rest of the week. Enjoy the wrestling. And enjoy Night of Champions as well. Until next time, peace out. Well, enough is enough. And it's time for a change. Professional wrestling. This is it. This is us standing up. Yes. Yes. Yes! 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 That's 1314! Make it death! Dina, I am the best in the world. Cause that's the bottom line! Cause Stone Cold Simpson!